What's up, folks? It's your boy Bob Hollywood back with another exciting review. Today's review is going to be of this Shadowrun Kaiyushi figure. This is from the Hero Clicks game, and these are six inch scale, five, six inch scale Shadowrun figures. I want to say these came out, I was going to say 2004, but these came out in 2003. <clears throat> Um, since we're looking at the back, it says, Welcome to the future. It's 2063. The world of Shadowrun duels is ruled by magical creatures and cybernetic weaponry. To survive, you'll need the latest laser-guided machine gun and the most arcane magic spells. Every piece of gear you use to customize your figure directly impacts its chances of survival. Gameplay is fast and deadly. On the mean streets of Shadowrun duels... Life is short, so come armed to the teeth. And then it says, mix and match gear from all the Shadowrun duels figures to create unique dice combinations for gameplay. The possibilities are endless. Each Shadowrun duel, duels figure has a unique base that keeps track of all the information you need to put this character into action. I will say this is my third Shadowrun figure. Um, you see some cross-promotion for Series 1. There's Lothan the Wise, Silver Max. I have Silver Max. The Street Deacon, Lieta, G Dog, I also have G Dog, and then Kiyushi, who we have here. I never knew how to play this game. I never had a desire to play this game. But initially, back in the day, probably, <clears throat> excuse me, probably around 2003, 2004, uh, more than likely 2003, I don't know, depending on when these released, I bought Silver Max and G Dog from the GameStop. They were on clearance. And even back then, I still liked the action figures. I wasn't collecting the way I am now, but every now and then I would buy an action figure. So I bought those two, and they're still in pretty good condition. Just randomly, this is an accessory that came with uh, Silver Max. This just happened to be here. You see, I cut into it. I was working on a custom a while back, a couple of years back when I was more into 118th scale figures. But that's enough rambling. I mean, you see, she comes with quite a few accessories. I don't expect her articulation to be the greatest. Um, G Dog's articulation isn't bad, but and neither is Silver Max. I'm just looking at the figure itself, but we will figure that out. But first, I'm gonna place her there. I'm gonna disappear for two seconds while I bust out her plastic present. I will be right back. And we're back. As you can see, she has a ton of accessories. Uh, a ton. There is this. I don't know. It looks like measuring tape. I have no clue what it's for. Let's let's look at the back of the box. I think it breaks it down. This is a ruler. It says dice and ruler included. Combat dials keep score. Base opens for storage, which we knew and you can see. And gear fits into hands. So this is a uh, ruler. I don't know what it does or how it how it's used i just don't know and i'll likely never find out i have no desire for a ruler outside of playing this game well this ruler and then there is looks like some instructions we're not going to open that we're not going to get into that and then there are <clears throat> and then there's some more in information about how it works i guess like how the die and everything work So speaking of a die, there are six of them, excuse me, seven of them, and they're all different colors, three yellow, one red, one green, one white, I mean, excuse me, two white, and I don't know if they all get rolled at the same time, I know nothing about it, but this is, I think the Dungeons and Dragons figures came with a die, or at least one die. She has a little necklace, if I can get it, and I'm not sure which way it would go. I'm assuming this way where it says the three and the red die, and it's a green necklace, green amulet rather. It looks like a dragon, and then this is made out of actual material like a little rope and we could put it around her neck it's gonna dangle pretty far so maybe we won't use that with her <clears throat> this is pretty cool this is uh i want to say the painted part is the green part because if you turn it over you can see a little brown bleed 
So I want to say it's painted, it's sculpted in the brown, and then that's painted on there, and then the green's painted on there. And then she also comes with alternate hands, and her hands are designed to be able to hold her weapons. This is her alternate right hand. As you can see, there's a peg on there. This is her knife, and you can see there's a hole. And it can go in either hand. The hole goes all the way through. I'm just going to put it on enough so it holds it. I don't want to risk breaking the peg. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a little tight. It's really tight, really. Got that off. Um, Where did the other hand go? And this is her left hand. And both hands are more like... I don't know. They could slap somebody. They're open, but they're not, you know, splayed out like this or anything. And we'll put this gun on this hand. And again, I didn't put that on that one very tight. That one was easier to get on. If you wanted to look a little bit better, you would uh, put them on there tighter. Let's have a better look at the weapons. So as you can see, the gun, this gun has a, a number two and the yellow die on it, the yellow square die, just like the amulet had, I believe, the red triangle on it. I can't remember what number it had on there. So I'm guessing you have to roll one of those die or both of those die. And if as long as it gets two or higher, I don't know, you can use the gun. But the gun looks like a standard handgun. It looks like it has a, a, a sight on it or laser beam or something. And it has an extended clip or mag. I don't know. I'm not a gun person. But it has like a little trigger. And this is the best as I can tell. This is a darker brown, a really dark brown. And this part is silver and that's painted. And again, the die and the uh, number is painted. Let's go back to the knife. The knife also has information on it. This is a one and then the triangle die, the yellow triangle die. It's a little bit bent. It's not the softest plastic. It's not the hardest plastic. It is a little bit warped. And that's probably for me trying to get it out of the plastic and trying to get it on that hand. But as you can see, it has a brown handle. And it has a dark, a gunmetal gray blade and a base there. And then again, it'll go in either of her hands. These hands that she has on her body don't have pegs, but she can hold the, the knife pretty easily with that hand. Um, these, hand these fingers aren't very pliable, so I'm not going to risk putting it in her left hand. And let's go over, well, the second to last accessory which is this bigger gun, and this is also a little bit warped. But this is cool, lots of paint, man. We, we, we've gone over this. Older figures have paint. Look at this, silver there, gunmetal gray, browns it looks like, and then obviously the white and green to tell you how the die roll, the dice roll you need. This, if this was a modern weapon, this was a G.I. Joe classified figure. This would be, or weapon accessory, this would be like green. The whole thing would be green. We've seen that before, or it'll be black or something. It just it wouldn't have this detail, man. And again, I don't know how much these figures retail for. When I bought the other two, they were clearance, and I don't remember how much I paid for them back then. And when I bought her, I think I paid about twenty dollars for. Her. I don't think they retail for twenty dollars back then. It was probably less than ten bucks. You gotta think, Marvel Legends were still, a th well, we're just busting out on the scene and they weren't that expensive. So I'm imagining this wasn't that expensive. So what I have here is the base. It has all the accessories that it came with. I'm going to try to close it. And it has three little sections. I'm trying to do it, show you without knocking everything out. Three little sections you gotta line up. And if you do that, you should be able to close this, no problem. I did it. You can hear it's, it's in there. 
So that's good. That's good. Let's have a look at Kiyushi. I like her aesthetic, man. She she is a Yakuza member. She's Asian. This is Asian American Pacific Islander Appreciation Month. Oh, nice. I like her little blade here. I didn't notice that until just now. She has a peg here for one of her weapons, probably the bigger gun. Nice little buns in her hair. So I'll say this with G Dog, he has these little green things on his back. They're bigger, and he's a bigger figure overall. And uh, they pop out. They, the glue just wore out. I think maybe my G Dog has one of four. I think they were. It came with four of them on there. It just is what it is. And I will say. I haven't gotten to her articulation yet, but her articulation is lesser than both G Dog and Silver Max. She has nothing below her waist. So, and they have T, T crotches, both of those guys. But she looks good, man. A lot of paint here. A lot of paint. It looks like there's a wash even on the boots. The boots look like real leather, there's texture to them. Whereas her pants are smooth. Whoa. Well, Smooth where I'm feeling it, but you can see there's texture there. So her clothes look like clothes. This vest could probably come off. I'm not going to do that. But you can see she has a sleeveless shirt. You could tell that even before that. And then look at that paint on the collar. Emulating a zipper. Um, it looks like there's some rub on the, uh, on her, on her breast. I mean, there's lines that are sculpted there. But then this looks like it's just the paint bleeding through, which is weird. You would think this is just, this would have been molded in white. Um, there's some more paint here. Lots of paint. Looks like she's bleeding and it's bleeding through the bandage. That is cool. And she also has several tattoos on her arm. A watch. The watch is detailed like the screen is. I mean, it doesn't have any numbers or anything, but you can see that the screen is silver. The watch head is black. The band is brown. And there's some silver dials on there. And the silvers look like two different silvers. So that's cool. Over here, she has two, well, two straps holding this knife to her wrist. And the buckles are silver. Everything is painted. Zippers here, painted. It's pretty cool. She has peg holes on the bottom of her boots and their thread or treads rather. Paint buckles. Look at that. Little pouches on her. Painted. Everything. Not so much on the back, but that's cool. But these little pouches on her side of her pants. The pants are again a really weird brown color. At least that's what my eyes are telling me. But you can see that the buttons on the pants on the cargo pockets are black. Lots of paint here. I didn't mention this tattoo. She has tattoos on both arms. Let's look at her face. You can see her lips are painted. She has on lipstick. Eyes are painted pretty good. They look even. They look like they're looking at the same things. Yeah, lots of paint here. Like dripping with paint. This would never happen. And I get there's inflation, so maybe the figures that are now these days $25 or so, that's where it went to, but there's no paint. Even going back to this Silver Max accessory, same line. Look at the paint on it. Look at the details. It's nuts. It is really nuts. Anyway, let's go over articulation. Like I said, there's very minimal articulation. Her head is just going to rotate 360. It's not going to go up or down. It's not going to go side to side. You can see it's moving there, but that's just because it's a little loose. Her arms rotate 360 at the shoulder. There's nothing else at her arm for her arms. They go up, give you a T. But there's no elbow, there's no, uh, I about to say knee, there's no elbow, there's no wrist. Her hands rotate, at least this left hand has rotated, and this right hand, I mean, they would have to rotate because they come out now that I think about it. Um, and I should have probably seen how easy or hard that was to do without having to apply heat. It looks like it's coming out. It came out pretty easy, pretty simple peg. 
So there shouldn't be any resistance getting her hands in and out. And there's further paint. I didn't mention it on her fingernails. Her fingernails, both sets of hands, fingernails painted. So that's her arms. That's her head. Only other piece of articulation is her waist. And I'm not going to try to make it go 360, but I believe it will. But again, there's nothing at the crotch, nothing at the knee, nothing at the boot, foot, anything. I'm not complaining. It, she looks good. She's going to stand there on the shelf. She's not going to get very active, but she does look good. And again, the effort they put into the paint and then the sculpt, if the engineering, if it's, it's not going to pose, that's fine. But you can just see the difference between an older figure and a newer figure. And it's always wild to me, man. Like, we're paying more and getting less. You saw all the accessories. Three guns. No, excuse me. Two guns and a knife. Paint on everything. Let's get her height. And of course, she's not standing up straight, but that's nothing we can do about that. She's about five and a half inches tall. So, yeah, there's that. And yeah, as we're going, as we're doing the the comparisons with the review crew, we'll we'll see. Um, she's a woman. I usually do the ladies first, and I'm not gonna break tradition. Here is Andra. Excuse me. That's Vixen, and that's Andra, and she comes to about their shoulders, and these are obviously newer figures, figures that have come out in the last 10 years or so, the last five years for that one, and this one lasts definitely no more than seven years old, um, I want to say. I, I want to say that confidently, but just look at Vixen, and just, she's painted. She might be a horrible example, because she's painted. She has three colors on this uh, torso part, and I'm imagine this was sculpted in yellow, painted black, painted silver there. You got some white down here. And then Andra's also a bad example because she's dripping with color as well. So those are bad examples, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Matter of fact, we'll bust out the we'll bust out Ernie Hudson, Winston Zedmore, who's just taller than her, and Devin. Same thing, just taller than her. She's just a slight woman compared to these two. But yeah, there's not there's not much paint. Like she's again, she's dripping with paint. He has some paint on him, but not much. Like there's the details don't have a wash. Like he just looks like he's wearing a beige suit. He just looks like he's wearing red. Yes, there's silver where the zippers are and the buckles and everything, but this more effort could have been put into these newer figures. It's, it's making me a little upset. And also, I'm not proving my point because every figure I've showed does have paint. Like this Roblox, plenty of paint. Plenty of paint. And this Black Panther actually has detail throughout. So, horrible examples. Horrible examples. But you know what I'm saying. If you collect action figures, and you have collected action figures any time in the last 10 years, you know that paint is scarce. That a brush is scarce. And I get it. If these companies, most of these figures in the review crew, and I'm not knocking the review crew, I like these figures. Most of these figures in the review crew are from Hasbro, um, more than 50%, I believe. Uh, and Hasbro's going to scamp. And if they gave us more paint, if they gave us brushes and washes, they'd be like, oh, we got to charge you $30 for a figure that was, again, back then, the figure was like 10 bucks. I'm assuming. It's been a while since I bought the original Marvel Legends. But a few years ago, they were $20. Everybody was okay with paying $19.99. And then now it's $22, $25. They'll give you a bunch of accessories, call it deluxe, and charge you $35, $40. Sometimes more than that. G.I. Joe figures, like uh, Junkyard Mutt, those figures, I think he's like $45 or $35. There's a G.I. Joe figure that's like $45. I think it is Junkyard and Mutt. And is it is it really worth it? Is it? I don't know. I doubt it. But here's the final two figures of the review crew. We got Titus O'Neil and John Jones. And again, she's coming to John's shoulders, and she's not even reaching uh, Titus' shoulder. But I like her. I do like like, they all have tattoos. They're all a tattoo crew. But look at their tattoos. Their tattoos are black. And typically, black skin does have black tattoos. And whereas hers has color, man. Like, and this, there were two lines of this. There were two lines of this figure. I don't know if it sold well enough. They were like, we're going to make two lines. But look at the NBA starting lineup figures that we did last month. One line. They charged $50 for 
excellent figures, mind you. But all that went into the licensing. They didn't even give those fi those figures their tattoos, which has probably been more licensing, depending. It doesn't matter. I'm ranting. This is a review. I don't mean to rant. Thank you for being here. Check out my other reviews. Come back, see me again. Action figures speak louder than words.